All right, talk about a retail facelift. Christina Parts Navalis is taking a closer look at why Saks Fifth Avenue revamped its entire beauty department. Watch. Saks Fifth Avenue opened its doors on Fifth Avenue on September 15th, 1924, and became a department store empire with the company's flagship store in New York City evolving into an iconic retail space. Saks Fifth Avenue is getting a makeover and moving its beauty department to the second floor for the first time since the 1900s. Let's check it out. The new floor is expansive with roughly 32,000 square feet of makeup, skincare, and fragrance products. Sack shoppers weighed in on whether they think this retail gamble will pay off. What do you think of the whole renovation part? The fact that it's on the second floor I'm now. I'm not so sure about this. Why is that? Because <laughs> it's on the second floor. <laughs> it was a big risk that the store took. I think it's much airier and brighter. With Sephora down the street and fierce competition online, Saks Fifth Avenue is aiming to win back shoppers by adding new experiences that go beyond the typical makeup application. During my trip, I visited the Blink Brow Bar and tried eyebrow threading for the first time. And then I hit the gym, the face gym. And you're my, your trainer. I'm your trainer. I was put through the paces with the face gym signature workout, an exercise routine that uses different tools to lift and tone my facial muscles. The new floor showcases over 100 brands. There are also private spa rooms and trained beauty consultants on hand to help shoppers. With other retailers like JCPenney and Sears struggling to lure customers, many department stores are stepping up their game in the age of Amazon. Christina Parts Nevelis is now with us with Saks Fifth Avenue's president, Mark Metric. She's at the company's flagship store in New York City. Christina. Thank you, Maria. So, Mark, you're the president. You're taking over this role. Can you tell me why you've shifted everything to the second floor? Is it all about the customer experience, or is this just a way to combat the online retail shopping? Well, first, you know, look, this is part of a multi-year, multi-phase project, okay? And it's really, the whole point of this was to create the ultimate oasis of beauty uh, for the luxury customer. And that's why we moved it upstairs. And how much, I heard some reports that it was costing roughly $250 million to renovate this store. Sure. Sure? You're agreeing with me? Okay, I so am. we'll say $250 million. Talking about just beauty departments, so downstairs you're going to be shifting to leather goods. Is that because of profit margins too? Is that a good avenue versus shoes, let's say? You know, this whole thing was thought through. It's kind of a sum of the parts. And we love leather goods, we love footwear, we love men's, and we love beauty. It was all about creating the ultimate kind of way to circulate through our store and experience Saks in total. Okay, and Saks is under the Hudson's Bay umbrella, which is a Canadian company, trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. How are the sales doing for the company? Because the earnings came out and same store sales, which is a common metric that a lot of investors look at, have been declining. So what are we seeing for Saks? Uh, we're seeing good things. I mean, you know, as we reported, we were up 6% uh, this last quarter. That makes four in a row on the positive side. So we feel like we have a great trajectory at Saks. So, so we have Saks. You're talking about the positive aspects of Saks, but then Lord & Taylor is also under the same umbrella. Hudson's Bay announced that they were cutting or closing 10 stores. What is Saks doing differently that that's not the case? I haven't heard anything about closing stores. Yeah, just thinking about what Saks is doing, it's all about what we're calling the new luxury. And we know we have to innovate, reinvent, and reimagine how we go to market with our customers, both through Saks.com and in our stores. And I feel like that's kind of the strategy we put in place a few years ago, and it's really starting to take hold right now. Given that you have the renovations here with makeup, should there be any changes to the Saks website pertaining to this makeup department? Should we see any, uh, you know, updated are you encouraging shoppers to buy their goods online as well? Absolutely. Look, we're encouraging shoppers to, to buy their goods from Saks. And we love Saks.com and we love our stores. And we believe in both. But what we believe in luxury is really the ecosystem of, of both channels working together. And so what you're seeing here is we brought 58 new brands in with this renovation. And you're going to see all of them, or mostly all of them, either online already at Saks.com or coming. And so it's really just about creating that, that kind of frictionless uh, you know, moment with the customer. Off camera, we just briefly talked about uh, guilt.com being under your umbrella as well, which is an online uh, shopping site that was bought by HBC. And now that's uh, being sold. Can you just tell me a little bit more about why that's happening? Sure. You know, after, you know, a lot of different considerations, we had to decide we wanted to really focus on the businesses inside of, of Saks and Saks All Fifth that are going to be able to really drive growth as we go forward. And, and that simply was what the decision was all about. Okay. And the store opens today. This is a big renovation. And I'm going to throw it back to you, Maria. All right. Great uh, stuff there. Christina, thank you. Christina Parts Nevelis, Mark Metric, thank you so much for joining us.